Hello and good morning to everyone who's joining us. Thank you for joining us for this episode of our Faculty Spotlight Series here at Virginia Union University. I'm Terrell Strayhorn, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and it's delighted to have the opportunity to connect with those who have joined us here in our Zoom room as well as those who are watching live stream. Today in our Faculty Spotlight, we have with us Reverend Dr. James Henry Harris. Professor Harris is a distinguished professor and Chair of Homiletics and Practical Theology and Research Scholar in Religion at the Virginia Union University School of Theology. He's also pastor of Second Baptist Church West End, both in Richmond, Virginia. He is one of 10 children born to Richard and Carrie Anna Harris in Chesterfield County, Virginia. He has a passion for teaching, preaching, and helping the poor and the oppressed. He has earned a Master of Arts in Philosophical Theology, the Master of Art in English and African American Literature, the Master of Philosophy, and a PhD in Urban Studies. He earned the Doctor of Ministry degree in Preaching and African American Church Studies. He is author of several books, including Black Suffering that we'll talk about a bit today, Beyond the Tyranny of the Text uh, with Abington Press 2019, no Longer Bound, A Theology of Reading and Preaching, The Forbidden Word, The Word Made Plain, The Power and Promise of Preaching, Preaching Liberation, and Pastoral Theology, A Black Church Perspective. Additionally, beyond all of the books and publications, Professor uh, Harris is contributor to many books and journals in Black Studies and Theology, Social Justice, and Beyond. Dr. Harris is married to Reverend Demetrius Harris, and they are the proud parents of two adult sons, James Corey and Cameron Christopher Harris. Without further ado, I welcome Professor Harris. Good morning, Dr. Harris. Dr. Strahan, good morning, and good morning to everybody on the, on the call. I'm honored to be here, and uh, thank you very much for the, um, for the invitation to talk a little bit about uh, various uh, interests this morning. Absolutely. Well, we're delighted to um, have this opportunity to sit down and talk with you about your work, talk with you about um, all that you have done. So, but to get us started, tell the audience and all of us a little bit about yourself, including your academic training, some of the fields of expertise, but beyond that, um, how you even came to be a professor and a pastor. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, it's a, almost a straightforward story. I wanted to say that it's circuitous, but it's not. Um, I was uh, a student at Virginia State where, University where I received my undergraduate degree in uh, business administration. And uh, then immediately upon graduating, I uh, enrolled at the School of Theology at Virginia Union uh, University. Um, at that time, uh, the dean was uh, Dr. J. D. Otis Roberts. And um, I spent some time there earning the Master of Divinity degree. And after that, I was called to a church in Norfolk, Virginia, where I was um, actually, I guess, the youngest pastor there in their history. I was 23 years old when I was called to uh, the Norfolk church. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, it was the beginning of a learning experience. Uh, theological training and understanding um, were very, very helpful. But I was also helped a lot by the lay people uh, in the church um, who really uh, taught me um, pretty much the elements of ministry. And I'm always grateful um, to both uh, clergy and laity for those kinds of experiences. I set out to become um, a general scholar in the sense that um, a folk who uh, examine my uh, resume or vitae will see that I have uh, studied in many areas and taught in uh, several of those areas as well. Um, so uh, initially my interest and continually my interest has been in uh, philosophy and philosophical theology and um, the intersections between disciplines. And therefore, um, I have 
uh, sought to become a kind of multidisciplinarian in the sense that um, I have worked in and studied in areas that intersect and overlap uh, such that my perspective is that uh, philosophy and philosophical theology intersect and overlap with um, you know, theological understanding and uh, humanistic understanding as well. So therefore, um, my recent area of study has been in going back to an area that I started studying early on, but, but uh, focusing a little more in philosophical theology in uh, recent, um, uh, recent years. And uh, that study uh, culminated in um, another graduate degree in that field where my, uh, the result of that study ended up being um, uh, a thesis that was turned into a book that is uh, published under the title No Longer Bound, um, a theology of, of reading and preaching. Uh, prior to that, I uh, studied English uh, literature and African-American uh, literature and uh, focused on uh, several persons of the Harlem Renaissance, particularly Nella Larson and uh, coupling that with um, an American writer, uh, Mark Twain. And so I have focused in those uh, areas as it relates to English uh, literature and African-American literature. And in addition to that, um, my earlier work was in an interdisciplinary degree itself, the PhD in urban studies, which I tell people is pretty much uh, African-American studies to some degree where I studied um, uh, urban education and um, policy uh, areas in uh, administration and in education. And then went on to um, write a, a dissertation about uh, the black urban church. It was also published under the title Black Ministers and Laity in the urban church. That was my pretty much my first uh, publication soon after about four or five years after earning the, um, uh, the PhD degree. And with a quest, a continued quest for uh, education, some of my friends had uh, called me and talked to me about the fact that um, there was a program that was being offered by uh, the former president of Virginia Union and Dean of the School of Theology, Sammy DeWitt Proctor. And um, I, I became a Proctor Fellow enrolling in Proctor's uh, Doctor of Ministry program that he was heading at uh, United Theological Seminary in Ohio. So I, I have, so my, my interest, as you can see, is multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary and the intersection of uh, religion, uh, theology, philosophy, um, um, literature, um, and in some sense, history, the humanities in general, trying to uh, figure out how all of these disciplines uh, connect with one another. And therefore, my efforts to, um, to write in several areas and to study and teach in several areas. And I've had the opportunity to teach um, both you know, mainly in theology, but also in philosophy, uh, also in English literature and African-American studies, and particularly African-American uh, church studies and so forth. I think that's, that kind of uh, capsulizes it. Um, I yeah. think, and plus I, I think that's enough about, uh, about myself at this point. Well, that's a great um, segue into talking a bit about, so you've talked about, I mean, even if you hear or read Professor Harris's bio, which we'll place in the chat, um, you know, you see a scholar who is interdisciplinary, and that is his work just um, reaches or speaks to literatures and theories um, between disciplines like religion and theology. Um, and even urban studies. 
but it is also transdisciplinary and that it crosses those normal discipline, uh, usual disciplinary boundaries so that your work is read and picked up and cited and used in all of these uh, various fields. Um, but before we go too far into the your scholarship and the book, Black Suffering, could you tell us a bit about your experience um, as a faculty member in the School of Theology and also pastor of Second Baptist Church? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to talk about both of those experiences. Um, as I said, uh, when I was a seminarian, um, I vowed that I would never be a pastor. And then uh, I talked to my theological students about this. And then I was actually called to be a pastor and therefore I accepted that call and have been very much interested in uh, pastoral ministry, pastoral work particularly. And, um, and again, that connects with the intersection between uh, practical theology and philosophical theology and uh, theology and practice uh, in general. But um, my, work, my work in uh, the, the churches, that is in uh, my earlier church and also in Second Baptist Church, as well as my work um, in Virginia Union as a, um, as a teacher um, has been very, very uh, rewarding. I started out uh, teaching uh, in the philosophy department at Old Dominion University initially. And then when I was called to Second Baptist Church, um, after being here about a year, I was uh, asked to teach uh, a few courses in practical theology at Virginia Union at the School of Theology, which is where I, um, where I began uh, teaching. And at the time, uh, Miles Jones was pretty much the uh, major professor in homiletics. Um, there was one adjunct uh, person in homiletics and that was uh, Nathan Dell. And uh, Miles had asked me to, uh, Miles and A.B. James had asked me to come on and teach because I also taught uh, the courses that A.B. James taught, which were in uh, church leadership and church administration as well. And so at Virginia Union, pretty much that's what I have been um, teaching, that's mainly in um, practical theology and have taught uh, a few other courses from time to time as the need um, uh, arose. And so, but my, my, my areas have been um, pastoral theology and homiletics, some uh, dabbling into uh, some of the other areas. Now, the reason uh, some of the books is because uh, when I when I began teaching in certain areas, I also did uh, certain research, thus uh, pastoral theology, because I was uh, I was teaching pastoral theology at Virginia Union and teaching homiletics. So I wrote in those fields, both in pastoral theology and in homiletics, and continue to write in uh, both of those fields, but also in expanded areas um, that are uh, focused uh, much more in uh, social justice and um, religion in general. My, uh, my interest has been uh, broad and part of that is because my study has been broad based as well. Um, you know, I, I have uh, studied people like uh, uh, Paul Ricoeur um, and others whose work is interdisciplinary. Those work is, you know, used in various uh, fields, not just in theological fields, but um, sort of spans uh, the, the gambit of, of, uh, of the humanities. And uh, th that's kind of uh, what I've patterned myself uh, after to some degree. And also naturally I have patterned myself after some of the, um, the leaders in ministry that I have uh, had the privilege to study with, um, mainly um, people like uh, Sam Proctor himself and others, but um, uh, Proctor to me was the uh, epitome of uh, the scholar pastor and um, I think represented that uh, all over the, the nation and pretty much all over the world. And also a kind of, um, ambassador 
for the black church, but also an ambassador for American democracy and, um, and, and community uh, participation. And so my thinking and practice is that um, uh, the minister, the preacher, the pastor is, uh, is a community oriented person and a community scholar, um, as well as a, a, a community servant, not just limited um, to one particular area. And I've always been troubled by the fact to some degree that uh, the black pastor in American society and American culture is not perceived as a scholar, is uh, generally uh, perceived as something else. And I put the something else in quotation marks, but not necessarily as a scholar. And at Virginia Union, I think we have sought to propagate the notion that uh, the scholar pastor is the ideal. While that is not always the case, it is um, something to which we have sought to strive. Uh, and, and therefore, that has had an impact on my own um, on my own life, my own understanding of um, what uh, theological education is about and, and should be about, and um, how that whole enterprise uh, helps uh, to develop uh, people in and outside of, uh, of the church and, out of, and of the uh, theological academy. And so in that sense, um, I have also um, sought, you know, to uh, create a nexus between uh, theory and practice, uh, trying to not privilege uh, either over the other, but to give them uh, equal weight. And that's a, a kind of, uh, of, of strategy and struggle that um, I think anybody continues uh, to wrestle with, but, um, you know, and so I say uh, to people that in terms of the black church, um, the, uh, the pastor is the closest thing to a philosophical theologian or any type of theologian that a lot of people are going to get to. And therefore it's incumbent upon uh, the pastor to be as adept as uh, possible intellectually and uh, academically but also pragmatically and practically. So, um, you know, in that sense, I, I also consider myself a pragmatist. I'm not under any illusions about uh, the work that is critical and that needs to be done and that continues. So I think that's in a nutshell, but I have a, you know, I mean, I can go on and on. So I, I'm trying to stop myself. <laughs> You're doing well. Um, I mean, I think that your I pre appreciate your conceptualization of the uh, pastor scholar, and as you said, the pastor as both community scholar and servant. Um, the pastor as um, more than theoretical, but as you said, theoretical and practical, and that you yourself um, see that there's a level of pragmatism to the work that you do. So I wanna move into um, some of your teaching and your scholarship. And so you teach at Virginia Union, you've taught across um, the years. Tell us a little bit about um, what you teach and your maybe one of your favorite courses to teach and why. Okay, um, as I said, um, I mainly teach in the area of uh, the broad area of practical theology, but homiletics, where I have uh, focused a lot of my attention in terms of scholarship and in terms of writing and in terms of, of uh, theoretical development of uh, the homiletical enterprise. Um, about 15 years ago, I served as the president of the Academy of Homiletics, which is the group of uh, persons who teach preaching across uh, across across America, uh, particularly North America, but also uh, some uh, in Europe and in other places. 
And so at Virginia Union, uh, I have taught uh, historically the middle course, uh, which, which was uh, a course titled PT 634, which was uh, preaching and worship too. We've changed the, the name or the title currently it's uh, to um, black preaching, but I've also taught introduction to sermon preparation. And I've also taught advanced preaching or advanced homiletics as well. I have taught all of the courses in the homiletics curriculum and all of the courses in the church leadership and church administration curriculum as well. But my favorite course probably is the, the um, it's, I'm torn between the first course that is uh, in our curriculum, PT 533, 533, Introduction to Sermon Preparation and Preaching, and also the second course now, Black Preaching. Um, at one point, we had three homiletics courses required in the curriculum, and we had the distinction of being the only um, seminary in the country, I believe in the United States, who required three homiletics or three preaching courses for um, the Master of Divinity degree. And I thought and still think that that was a uniqueness of the School of Theology because our school has historically been known as a place to produce stellar preachers for the American pulpit and the black pulpit in particular. Um, but in that course, uh, and almost in any of my courses, whether it's the first course or the second course or, or, or historically the third course, um, those courses have always been interdisciplinary uh, such that I have uh, required the reading of uh, literary works, um, uh, theological works, some philosophical works, and homiletical works. Again, trying to show forth the uh, nexus or the nexiological relationship that exists in the homiletic enterprise, which, um, you know, the whole theological curriculum in many ways um, lead to the whole area of practice in the sense that um, theological education, very much like uh, medical school education and very much like legal education, law school education, being uh, theological school being one of the uh, three early professional schools in American education. Um, and um, unfortunately at the bottom of that list, starting with the medical school, the law school and the uh, theology school, both of them all three of them being professional uh, schools, meaning that uh, when people finish those initial degrees, the MD or now the JD used to be the LLB and uh, the MDiv, which used to be the BD degree. But when people finish either of those degrees, they are prepared to practice. And uh, so, so that becomes very critical and very, very important that the whole area of practice um, and competent practice is a part of, of uh, the curricula. And therefore, I, I, have, um, I have approached these uh, courses with a certain rigor. And um, as a rule, uh, uh, students in my classes have uh, lots of reading. Um, that's why uh, I, I wrote the book on a theology of preaching and reading because reading becomes a very critical element in the preaching enterprise. And uh, my philosophy and the philosophy of others at the School of Theology is that uh, we want to have a very competent and compassionate uh, ministry and ministerial student that comes uh, through the School of Theology. And also that possesses the master of divinity degree because uh, you know when you are awarded a master of divinity degree there is a certain expectation of uh, of competence and i think that's a high level and uh, we have historically tried to um, propagate that in uh, the courses and i particularly because um, in most of my preaching courses i i i, I um we, we have a reading in several areas, as I said, one in uh, literature, African-American literature. And a lot of times that literature relates to uh, the pastoral ministry. Um, 
For example, we have read A Lesson Before Dying, Ernest Gaines' book. In that book, there is um, Reverend Ambrose, who is a key character in that book. We talk about his theology, his perspective, and so forth. But there's also a lot of dialectic going on in that book and a lot of tension that goes on in that book as well. Um, I also, we also read The Stranger by uh, Albert Camus, um, a kind of uh, existentialist uh, literary uh, theorist. Um, and we read um, other books as well, including um, Toni Morrison's Beloved. And all of these books become a part of the uh, preaching or homiletics um, uh, curriculum in terms of how they relate to my particular courses. We also read uh, certainly books in theology and books in homiletics. And a lot of them have been books that I have written myself in homiletics, uh, preaching liberation uh, often is uh, read. The word made plain is often uh, read, uh, including no longer bound is, um, is also often read uh, in, these, um, in these preaching courses. So uh, the whole idea is that uh, theory is very integral to practice. And I know that in, in the black church and in black ministry and pastorate, oftentimes uh, the theory part is the part that's overlooked. And there is still a cadre of persons in the black church who may prefer that the minister or the pastor is not theologically trained. But I think those numbers are diminishing uh in this modern time and age and so um uh, but it's always a challenge and our training has to be such that it helps to advance in my view black people it is not just for the purpose of uh, of, of of the self but it's also for the purpose of the other and uh by that i mean uh everybody within our circle and everybody within our community. And um, it's critical to me that we develop persons where the community is uh, excited about listening to and hearing. And also that our theological school remains one that people will flock to in order to study with uh, persons who have um, held up uh, the banner of black theological education and continue to model that uh, to our communities. So uh, the bottom line is uh, any of the courses in the, in, in the homiletics uh, area have been uh, courses that are particularly of interest uh, to me. And as I said, I have taught them over, over I've taught all of them in the in the required curriculum at the School of Theology. But I've also taught preaching in other places, not just at Virginia Union. I've taught preaching um, as a visiting professor at Princeton. I've taught preaching as a visiting professor at Luther Theological Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I've taught preaching um, in Chicago. Um, and I've taught preaching at the National Baptist Convention uh, for many, many years. And I continue to teach preaching to um, groups of pastors who want to uh, hone their skills in uh, the homiletics area and often in the leadership area. So uh, across the breadth and across the span of this country, I have uh, taught uh, preaching to um, a lot of people um, and uh, continue to do so. But uh, the pandemic has, has put the brakes on a lot of my uh, traveling around uh, the country to teach preachers. Um, the, last, uh, the last trip I took uh, before the pandemic was to teach a group of preachers um, in an institute um, out in Oakland, California. And, um, and also a, a, another group in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, that was in uh, January and in February of, uh, of 2020. But um, so that's been the, that's been the um, 
pretty much the exciting focus of teaching uh, students at Virginia Union. The other thing real quickly is that I have encouraged our students to pursue graduate education and graduate study. And we have uh, several students who are in graduate school now, uh, several of them in PhD programs around the country. Uh, we've, I've had a student recently who got a, um, an STM from uh, Boston uh, University and uh, a couple of students who recently received their STM and the uh, Doctor of Ministry degree from Drew University. And we have several students in PhD programs and we have had several students to have earned their PhD. As a matter of fact, uh, the first black uh, woman to earn a PhD in homiletics from Princeton was one of my students uh, coming out of the MDiv program at Virginia Union and had also served as a teaching assistant with me in the preaching courses at Virginia Union. So That's thank incredible. you. Thank you so much. Any, my pleasure. Thank you for sharing so much. And there are comments in the chat where an individual were talking about um, the asset that you are to the church, certainly to um, the university um, and to the community. So before we close, um, I mean, I have behind me and thank you for uh, my copy. I've read Black Suffering, Silent Pain, Hidden Hope by Professor James Henry Harris. Um, and just want to, I mean, it's an opportunity to speak with the, the author. So in the, your book's been described as a call to greater consciousness. And in the book, you actually write about and describe suffering um, as an everyday reality of black life, especially black life in America. You highlight um, suffering's many manifestations, the way it shows up in the world, both back, back in history, as well as even in present day times. And I mean, we're living in the middle of a global pandemic. We're living in the middle of Black Lives Matter movement. So real quick, a word about the book, um, your conceptualization of black suffering, and maybe a word of hope to those who are looking for it in these perilous times. Absolutely, thank you so much for the question. Uh, Black Suffering as a book has grown out of, uh, out of a continuous uh, study, <clears throat> but more particularly, I, was, uh, I presented a, a proposal for a paper that was accepted for the Black Theology Conference that was held in, um, in Pretoria at uh, the University of South Africa. I think in 2015 or 2016, I first presented um, the outlines of the book in a paper at the Black Theology Conference in South Africa. And uh, subsequently uh, was invited to do the Hampton University lectures. And um, that, that uh, had a theme similar to um, the writing that I was, was undertaking. And so uh, the lecture in South Africa, along with the, the lectures at uh, Hampton University um, presented themselves in a way that I took the opportunity to pull together some of the other um, things that I had been working on in black suffering. The very first chapter in the book, The Color of Suffering, I began working on when I, uh, was um, a graduate student in the um, Eng English and African-American literature program at, uh, at VCU. And uh, that particular uh, short story, I um, outlined in a, uh, a seminar on short story writing um, and fiction writing at um, in, in that in the English department there. So I, I started I started that there. And as you see, the book itself uh, is um, kind of a compendium of what I'm gonna call the the easy and the complex. Um, much of the book is easy reading in my view. There are a few elements in the book that are that are complex and and we might be might be described as dense um, because they they focus on uh, some other areas. But the whole idea is to pull together again the whole notion of interdisciplinarity because I'm trying to talk about um, one of um, one of uh, uh, 
of the uh, philosophers that we have heard about, that's the German philosopher Hegel. But uh, so I talk about Hegel and the racism that Hegel propagated, but I also try to um, infuse the book with short stories in order to break up some of the uh, density that may exist in the writing. And so th the book is designed where there's a short story, there's a, an essay, a short story, there's an essay and so forth. Um, and so the whole issue of black suffering is uh, something that I see that is ubiquitous in American life. And um, in traveling uh, internationally, not just in American life, but in the life of black people around the world. And uh, therefore I thought it was incumbent upon me to at least uh, try to say something about it, put something on paper about it. And I was, um, pleased that uh, Fortress Press, one of America's uh, uh, fine publication houses, um, picked up the, um, the proposal and picked up the manuscript. But the theme of this book, the theme of Black suffering, which is my latest book, is that um, suffering is ubiquitous and there is to some degree a kind of unconscious, not totally unconscious, but uh, maybe a, a, um, an intentional uh, unconsciousness regarding the, the presence of black suffering. Black suffering is pandemic. It is, it is ubiquitous. It is, it is everywhere. I argue in the book that, you know, that uh, black people wake up every day and it doesn't matter who you are. You are, I mean, you could be accosted by the police. You could be shot or killed by the police at any given point of the day and all of these things become uh, a part of what I call the principle of black suffering uh, in the book. Short story and then I'm done. And that is uh, on, the, on the second day that, I, that we were in uh, South Africa, uh, I took a short uh, tour of Soweto and the story is in the book, a young black boy about 10 years old asked, uh, came up to me and, and asked if he could sing a song and he sang a song and did a little jig. And I gave him a few dollars, maybe um, five or 10 American dollars. And he said to me, uh, he said, sir, you don't have to be afraid of us here. This is a, a nine or 10 year old boy looking in my face saying, sir, you don't have to be afraid of us here. I tell the story because apparently this child was able to perceive an ingrained element of fear that existed in my persona. And I'm saying that this fear is an American fear that, you know, that, that uh, accompanies uh, black life on the regular. And the book goes on to talk about that from a theoretical as well as from a practical perspective. Black suffering. Wow. Well, thank you for that wonderful overview. And if you have not read it, um, it is available. Black suffering, silent pain, hidden hope, with our guest, our professor, professor in the Samuel Dewitt Proctor School of Theology, Dr. James Henry Harris. And we certainly have enjoyed our time with you this morning, Professor Harris. Thank you. So to all of you who have joined us, um, both in our Zoom room, as well as those who are watching on our live platforms, again, thank you for joining us each and every Friday, nine o'clock in the morning to talk with us about our faculty spotlight. At Virginia Union University, we have a world-class faculty engaged in rigorous research and meaningful teaching, um, important outreach efforts with the community, and we get an opportunity to meet them and spotlight them every single Friday. So until next time, Wear your mask, wash your hands, take good care of yourself, and have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.